Welcome to the Silver Screen Project, where we look back at a series of films in anticipation of an exciting new cinema release. We recently covered 2016's Doctor Strange, and what if Doctor Strange had lost his heart instead of his hands in preparation for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Ooh. which we went to see in cinema very recently and are now here to talk about. Yes, we are. Sam, what did you think of the Multiverse of Madness? Overall, I really enjoyed it. I uh, wasn't necessarily surprised by a lot of things. I think I'd kind of ruined a couple of bits for myself. And, you know, I've got my criticisms, but generally I thought it was pretty good. What about yourself? Yeah, so I think this is the most blind I've got into a Marvel film in a long time. Oh, yeah, okay. I knew nothing of the plot points. I knew a couple of characters were in it, yeah. but they weren't exactly how I thought they were going to be in it. Yes. Overall, I thought it was pretty good, but I felt a little bit underwhelmed at the end. Yes, I did. And we will keep it spoiler free for the first couple of minutes in case... Uh, yeah. Yeah, in case you haven't seen it yet. It's only just come out the past weekend, so there'll be a fair few people who haven't got a chance to see it yet. But overall, it was good fun. It brings back a lot of what people like about Doctor Strange. It twists some stuff to angles you're not expecting. Mm -hmm. It does stuff that, like a lot of Marvel stuff does these days, just like, oh, a very, like, a... Crowd cheering moments. Yeah, fan service kind of stuff. Yeah, do, which yeah. people love and I enjoyed in this as well. Like, yeah, I'm a yeah. sucker for fan service. There's some good stuff with characterizations like you kind of hinted at. Some that, you know, it's good evolution. Some that maybe come out of not necessarily nowhere, but unexpected. Uh, one of the things that we both said we were looking forward to is the the magic, the sorcery, the witchcraft. Yeah. And I think that's some, that's one of the kind of standouts yeah. from this. And it, it takes a step further and does it shows us magic we haven't seen before. Yes, it does. And uh, it's quite varied visually and kind of lore Yeah, <laughs> and it shows characters that have different kinds of magic. And there is kind of a clear difference between their magic, yeah. which is quite good and yeah. it avoids the whole shooting lasers at each other it does <laughs> which and there's, there's spoke a, about. probably a couple of bits like that in this but nothing I can particularly think of no. there's, uh, there's some interesting takes on that with multiple versions of kind of people uh, up against each other yeah and we kind of mentioned before we started recording that this was listed as horror the first Marvel film yes. to be so there is certainly elements mm. I wouldn't call it a straight horror it's still more action yeah. superhero stuff that Marvel yeah. is there is elements, there's certain scenes that yes. are particularly horror-ish. And yeah, and part- the Sam Raimi kind of, both kind of the cinematography that he's kind of known for, some of the kind of close-ups and kind of wacky angles and stuff, that plus his kind of horror background does shine through. Yeah, I- and I think that's something that stands out. It does have the kind of unique feel that we have missed from quite a few of the films over the last yeah. 10 years to be honest and for me it felt more like sam raimi's horror mm. um projects than his like spider-man yeah, film his superhero kind of which stuff. was yeah, like yeah. the whole classic campy superhero stuff which yeah. the early 2000s were mm. this is more of his horror stuff I think yeah. if you'd watch the Spider-Man trilogy and then this, you probably wouldn't guess that it's the same director. No, not necess- There's a couple of shots which are kind of similar and there's a few kind of very vague references in kind of set pieces. But, yeah. But generally speaking, yeah, I would, but I would agree. If you there, said, yeah. oh, the guy that did the Evil Dead doing a superhero film. Yeah. You would probably expect this. Yeah, yeah. And there's some, yeah, some shots that are very much harkening back to that. Some little sound cues that play a few times as well, yeah. which are good, but... Yeah, generally, I uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the bits I didn't, we'll talk about as we move through, but I don't know how much more we can really say without getting into spoilers. Yeah, one aspect, we talked about um, kind of the wider implications of this film. Yes. When we yeah. spoke last time around in What If. We did our kind of predictions a little bit. Yeah, we, yeah. and this didn't quite it's it's more self-contained film than i yeah, kind of anticipated more than i was kind of hoping but i think you know a solid standalone film is 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 good still it's not something that to be kind of yeah that really is it yeah uh, but yeah overall had fun wanted a bit more but it's still good in its own way yeah absolutely um so shall we go into spoilers we'll get into spoilers um, there so yeah, like I said, not knowing anything about it, like I yeah. kind of spoke, 
I thought it was going to be Strange and Wanda teaming up to okay, fight against yeah. Baron Mordo. Yeah. It was not that at all. No, and it was very, they were at odds almost immediately there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> partly because I, I, you know, I look at, I don't really watch the trailers as much now. I watch the first one. I'm a little yeah. bit more watching them than you, but based on the couple of posters and stuff, I follow things on uh, Instagram and stuff. There, there was kind of indications that she was kind of going down a dark path. And yeah. I kind of implied that when we were doing our theories last episode. And we did also kind of get that from WandaVision. We did. But at the same time, WandaVision, the way it ended, it was unclear. We saw her using the dark hold and looking to other realities, which is very much, you know, the threads that's carried on with this. Yeah. But, but it's unsure whether she's going to redeem herself or, as you said, when we came out, Lewis... Um, almost just be a bad guy again for like the third or fourth third, time yeah. effectively. Um, I quite like that though because um, yeah. particularly in like things like the MCU mm. it's rare that you see the fall of a hero. Yes. Um, so having somebody who was a popular one of the stronger Avengers yeah, yeah. become the antagonist. And they even talk about that in this. Does Doctor Strange say something about various bug themes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It still has elements of the classic Marvel yeah, jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's not too heavy on that. I think it's funnier than the first Doctor Strange, but in a natural way rather yeah, than the first quippy. Doctor Strange is kind of like, here's a joke and it doesn't land and you're like, okay, move yeah. on. Kind of thing. But yeah, I really like, and I think Wanda makes a great vision <laughs> villain. <laughs> she, well, in, in, in one division, she literally made a great vision. She so did. There we go. Um, because you can't, you you know the character. You can yeah. kind of understand where she's coming from. Yeah, and you see the kind of duality to it. You see yeah. through it almost. But then the fact that she is given this opportunity in this film, both Elizabeth Olsen and the character of Wanda, to be this full-on villain is something that I think we really needed to see. And yeah. you see from when she's kind of putting on the front when they first meet to then when she kind of, she says next time the Scarlet Witch is coming kind of thing. And yeah. she comes up to Kamataj and she's, I don't think that sequence fully got its kind of, it didn't no. live up to everything they could have done, but it was a cool sequence nonetheless. Yeah. And as we kind of mentioned when we came out, it yeah. did kind of um, go back to when we were first introduced the character yeah, when she was a villain she's creepy she's kind of getting into your head and yeah, stuff like that which was the nice moment when see. she she like sneaks out from behind that guy is exactly like she was yeah. in Age of Ultron it's, and it's, it's nice kind of comparable to the what if episode we looked at yeah. where it's what if you take this character mm. take everything away from them and then corrupt them yeah. which is what happened in what if with Doctor Strange and it's what happens here when you've kind of taken away her her love and her kids and then introduce the dark hole to her and she becomes a full-on oh, evil full character on, yeah and as it goes on those horror elements are mostly with wonder and there's yeah there's her there's some jump scares the bit where she's like climbing out of the reflection yeah it's, it's very, very like ring. ring yeah, yeah. exactly yeah um yeah so i, I liked villain yeah. wonder i also as i said i was anticipating mordo being the villain yes and this isn't the same mordo no it's so we still don't know three eight is it yeah we still don't know what 616 well i was when i was going through my uh making these notes for this kind of thinking back earlier today i realized that mordo is the only one of the illuminati who doesn't die so i don't know if that's an intentional way of bringing him back and maybe him and the the 616 version will will join up together or something like that yeah because it does seem strange and... <laughs> it seems strange that he wasn't killed off That's whereas true. the rest kind of, of them didn't were... notice. no it's something and he is very similar to his 616 counterpart he is he comes across very nice and it's obviously a bit of a kind of trick there when you first see yeah him. um going down that line yeah, we're yeah. introduced to the illuminati yes, which are, was yeah. I didn't see. I actually, no, no. I was told the day before by mistake <laughs> that Captain Britain from What yes, If was yeah. in it. And as we walked into the cinema, there were some people outside talking about Peggy Carter. Yeah, they also knew... mentioned Maria Rambo, but I don't think you heard I that. I didn't hear so. that. So the rest of the Illuminati was a complete surprise yeah, to me. Yeah, and there's some, I think those two are, so Mordo uh, 3, so Mordo, uh, their version of Captain Marvel and Captain Britain are probably like on the lesser end of the yeah, kind of totally, you know, the, the surprises. After there. that, we then see Mr. Fantastic played yeah. by 
John Krasinski, yeah. who's been rumoured to play him for like a decade now. And I, we talked about this afterwards. I think we both kind of agree that that's probably them just being like, there, we've done it. He's had his chance to do yeah. it. I don't imagine. I feel like John Krasinski kind of got bored of the rooms as well. To be honest, I don't think he was that good as the character. I didn't no. fully buy this kind of intellectual guy. Yeah, And I've never really seen that with who is effectively Jim from The Office, isn't he? But yeah. it was still like seeing him on the screen, he did a little bit of stretching, you know, yeah. very minor It was fun stuff. to see that character. It was very MCU. fun to see it. Patrick Stewart comes in yeah, as that was the That was Charles what I Xavier. thought you'd had spoiled for you. No. So I'm so glad we didn't. Kind yeah, of, and that was great because he was just straight in. He was the X-Men Charles Xavier. Exactly yeah. how you remember Effectively him. from the animated series because they play the song. Yeah. They, you know, the, Literally the visuals. Literally the music comes up. And we were talking about the... Uh, the waves, the kind of psychic waves when he's doing yeah. it's all very off the page, off the eye. And then the kind of the, remember the Luminati that <laughs> shook me the most. <laughs> like like a voice from an inhuman yes, voice box. Was fucking Anson Mount's black bowl. <laughs> and I like Anson Mount yeah, in, yeah. in Star Trek. And we've spoken he's about it recently. Good. I can't remember in what context. Um, Inhumans but... is one of the worst things I've ever watched. <laughs> and me and Christine watched the entire series. Yeah. It's terrible. And Anson Mount always looks like he's got a frog in his mouth. I only watched the first two episodes. I watched some, all of, There's the, some hilarious stuff in that. The first two episodes are by far the best two episodes. I just remember <laughs> when he we flash back to him killing his parents and he goes, no to yeah. them. And then they just turn into a fine mist. Yeah. But I enjoyed him being it. And it's kind of like made in humans canon. Yeah. And do you yeah. know what? Bring Anson Mount's Black Bolt into the universe. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. off the Inhuman series. I, I think... I think all of these are them either having their last hurrah or giving them the justice. Water. Yeah, I, I yeah maybe for, maybe for I him. think of those surprise three, Black Bolt's probably got the biggest chance coming in because yeah. like you said, John Krasinski's probably not going to be missed. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Patrick Stewart, they'll probably not use because he's been doing that role for twenty years, but Inhumans was bad. They might want to give Black Bolt, who is a powerful good hero a proper go yeah you know um, I, I can see that yeah and they will have to bring in the inhumans at some point it seems yeah. like we spoke about ms marvel on uh the yet to be released at this point episode of sonic the hedgehog but you know i, I, I it seems like they're moving away from the inhuman origin for that character so they're almost putting it off. I probably until after X Men at this point, yeah, which would make sense. Um, but they even like his powers a bit show because he 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 kills their version of Doctor Strange by just like saying I'm sorry. Yeah, and you see the power, and that's things like that, like that scene where they show the alternate ending to Thanos on their universe. Yeah, he seemingly was dispatched on Titan in the first kind of interaction. Yeah, which maybe yeah. Um, the stuff like that is is the kind of stuff we saw in What If that's just like that's that kind of comic book like yeah. you know just there's no reason not to have a, a version of Thanos without getting the voice actor in just have them there dead yeah. why not like it's cool yeah, we got to see this cool, cool group and um, then obviously Wanda just just kills takes them, them apart and they're, they're like we can handle that witch and it's yeah, like oh. and the way she like that brutal death so like Miss Fantastic gets stretched and like cheese string just into apart. like nothing she kind of thing. snaps Charles Xavier's neck yes. like it's nothing yeah. and takes Black Bolt's mouth away so when he speaks his fucking brain like ma- yeah, it explodes yeah. and like the back of his head just, yeah. head just like collapses down it was, it, and that's the first one and we were like whoa what yeah. the fuck <laughs> and that's kind of horror-y like yeah. gore and Captain Carter gets, gets cut in, cut half, in half with the shield it is like which actually I was uh, I saw people comparing it to there's a couple of times in things like Winter Soldier where Steve catches the shield in his stomach kind of yeah. thing because it's been thrown by Bucky or whatever and it's kind of like turning that on its and of, even its though side. that is kind of the fan service he bit of the film I do think that was the best part of the film I, I would probably agree and it is it did feel like a what if episode that whole section yeah and I think that part I really liked and kind of leaning on that kind of multiversal stuff I liked seeing the other universes I thought I kind I of wish they well. did more that's of it that's what I was going to say I, I it sounds silly but I, I said I wish there was more multiverse and more madness yeah no I totally agree <laughs> and that we we see we see kind of hints and Easter eggs as we're moving through the the universes the few times we are. Um, and I understand why they didn't jump around loads. And 
I was expecting maybe, maybe a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or maybe you see J.K. Simmons as, as the original J. Jonah James, you know, yeah. and I, I kind of wish they'd had a couple more little hints and, and, yeah. and cameo cameos rather than these kind of slightly meteor roles there. But at the same time, yeah, you don't um, want to rely on that too much. And what they did with it, I think, was one was other good. thing that I did like was a true cameo in true yeah. Sam Raimi style, <laughs> getting Bruce Campbell back yeah, as like a street yeah. vendor who just punched himself for three yeah, weeks. Just... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, of course. When, when Bruce Campbell turned up, I was like, yeah, I'm I'm on board for that. Yeah. Of course, it's Sam Raimi. I think film. there was some rumors at one point that either he would play Mysterio because there was the Mysterio. I think there, original planned. Thing. There was the um, like what do you call it, like story storyboards boards. Yeah, for yeah. Spider-Man Four because yeah. he plays the three different characters in the original, and it was going to reveal that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, either that or I think there was rumors that he was going to play like a multiversal Doctor Strange because he's got the dark hair and you give him a bit of a goatee, yeah. you can kind of imagine that. But yeah, I think just him being just this guy probably is better than him being, a per- yeah. you know, like it's a just named a fun character. Kind of One last thing that I thought was quite fun yeah. uh, was zombie Doctor Strange. Yeah. Like he literally reanimates a corpse and is that corpse for the kind of climax of the film, which I was think- silly. But fun. <laughs> I think there was, uh, it was, I think it was in one of the later teasers. And I remember seeing a headline about whether the Marvel Zombies universe from What If was going to be brought in. And right. I, I didn't really know the context of that. And when it kind of, when he gets killed at the start and he, you see him kind of, the flesh is going a bit funny, I thought, oh, he's going to become. Yeah. But I like that they did something very different with it. And he, he used it as this kind of uh, vessel to do the the dream walking or universe walking or whatever, which which was one of the things I really liked as well, where there's that scene where Wanda's doing it for the first time and it's very evil dead with the kind of different bits fading over each other and yeah. the guitar riff and everything. And it's all very kind of moody and like feels like a kind of 80s kind of horror film in Definitely, some way. Yeah. There was obviously stuff that we didn't really like. We've yes. touched on a few bits. So kind of one thing that we kind of mentioned before about it not cutting to the wider world. Yeah. We kind of said last time around in the what if that we were both hoping that this would be kind of the jump point for this phase yes. to kind of open it up to what this part of the MCU is going to become. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really do that. It was another no. standalone film, mm-hmm. which is fine. It's own thing. But at this point, after Spider-Man, yes. Shang-Chi, Black Widow, I kind of want them to... To, look what else to get is going the kind on. of turn the gears up a little bit because we get the post credit scene with Charlie's Theron playing Clear or Clear, 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 I think it's pronounced, and that could have been something, and it is yeah. something, but I don't know, maybe I don't know. I thought like we haven't had a really good post credit scene in a while. I <laughs> think you, you enjoyed the Shang Chi one with uh Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner, didn't you? Yeah, I, and I quite like that because it it implies the wider universe and it, it talks about it sending the signal and you go, oh, what could that be? But it's still very, very vague. Yeah, think, you know, kind like, of... j- like the Guardians post credit of just Thanos being like, I guess I'll have to do it myself. Yeah. I want something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> um, agree. And, and I think lots of the kind of universe plot stuff was was kind of, I know you've got the suspension of disbelief, but they're talking about incursions and they're talking about, and I know that that's probably alluding to something else, maybe Secret Wars where the, yeah. new, the new Secret Wars that was like the last five years was was the ultimate universe and the regular universe coming together and multiversal yeah. stuff and all that sort of stuff. And if they're leaning towards something like that, this may well be something we look back on and go, oh, that was the indication yeah. of that. But um, it's just, it was a lot of Another thing that babble. I, the pros and cons of going in blind is it's great being surprised, but there's also aspects that you kind of anticipate happening or hope happen that yeah. don't happen. Like, so the one trailer I did see, it looked like evil Doctor Strange from What If. Well, was yeah, I was going to say Doctor Strange not being in it was, and we talked about it after. I'm pretty sure if we went back and looked at that, they did make him look he much looks more like the trailer. That. He looked yeah, much more like um, it. Which I was a little, it was just a generic kind of evil Doctor Strange rather than the what if one, which I'm kind of like, why not just use the what if one? Um, and another thing I've kind of ever since Loki. Yeah. I've been kind of waiting for Kang to make his film appearance. Yeah. And I'm sure after Loki, I saw 
the guy that plays Kang was listed in the cast for this. Maybe, but sometimes IMDb is just. I yeah. mean, he was announced. He's going to be in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Yeah, I thought he was going to be in Spider Man. I thought he was going to be in Strange. I've got no hope in being in Ant Man. No, no, <laughs> he was. He's he's actually. Been, That's what I heard about the Doctor no, Strange. No, no, but he's, they've like they officially announced right. him for that. They announced Good. him for that before he was in Doctor Str- before he was in Loki. That right, was what okay. he was supposed to first be in. Okay, so, so I'm looking forward. He to will that. be in that whenever that comes out. Probably. Um, next year um, yeah um what else so we mentioned the bit where yeah um, next year it is wonder yeah. attacks kumatar yes which like i said the wonder stuff was cool i felt the sorcerers were a bit pointless they kind of had their shield yeah they look cool together some of them have bow and arrows for some reason yeah they're just like and magic then they, ones. and then they all just kind of run away i and think a lot anything. of it is supposed to be that holding the shield thing it's the mind together thing but yeah. it was done so quickly that it didn't really have any you know and similarly i think uh rachel mcadams christine palmer was given a bigger role in this but still didn't really do that much yeah and, and she's supposed to be this kind of the Doctor Strange's heart and all that. And I do get that, but I just think the character herself in this, she she was supposed to be this great doctor who was apparently just a scientist as well. Yeah. And I get that the character's probably done loads of good stuff, but we She's we just see her kind of flail around this. and run around. Yeah. A bit. And also we mentioned last time around that the what if version of Christine is different to the Doctor Strange version. Yeah. Because the whole thing about what if is that he's madly in love but I can't go that yeah. way. Whereas in Doctor Strange, he's kind of it's in the kind past. of indifferent to her a little bit. Yeah, but then this uses he's the back, what if version. He's back to being like, but I think the whole point is that they never really that they, they talk about they never really made it work and all that. But yeah. he's still just like pining over her, which but, is fair enough. But, but like this following the 2016 Doctor Strange. Their relationship doesn't make much sense because it's like, yeah, this isn't the relationship that was set up in I 2016. Think they should have done something towards the end of 2016 where he, there's some indication that he's still in love with yeah, her. Yeah, all it is, he's very like matter of fact. He's like, thanks for helping me again. Uh, bye. <laughs> they just seem like friends at that point. They've got history, but it's kind of all in the yeah, past yeah yeah. so yeah. yeah it's kind of like okay they are making this a whole thing maybe they should have done that six years ago uh, yeah i think there was some regret on the the writers part um, there. but yeah the only other thing is that i thought it ended quite quickly it was kind of a bit anticlimactic and, yeah the like, way the, they solved it with wonder made sense but it's still yeah. kind of and all the stuff with i hope this isn't the end of wonder i think they'll give her a break yeah because she, apparently she came straight from one division to filming I think it was this. Like two days, wasn't it? Yeah, she came straight off, and apparently they let her have quite a lot of kind of reign of where the character was and stuff because she just spent like months working on a TV show. Yeah, which makes sense. But the whole thing with the mountain, with the the dark hold, was written. They didn't even talk about. There's there's mention in one division of a demon from another dimension that yeah. gives her the power. It it. It felt like there was bits missing, and apparently there yeah. was about half an hour that was cut out of this. So, Makes if that ever sees the light of day, it'll be interesting to see. Release the it, Raimi the cut. Raimi cut, yeah. Um, the other thing is, we've got this far, we've not talked about America Chavez, who's yes. essentially one of the main characters. In yeah, this. I remember when we were watching it, uh, Amy kept saying, Oh, it's really annoying that she's called America. <laughs> and I know it's people's names, but I do understand because they yeah. constantly be like, America's in trouble. We need to go and <laughs> yeah. save her. And it's like, yeah. yeah. And There's considering not... she's not a Captain America themed hero, she's just a completely different yeah. person. She has a star on her jacket, but she, I don't think she's even from America. She's just from a different dimension. Yeah. So, yeah, I think she. I think she was quite a charming kind of character. Quite, I liked her powers as well. Yeah, it was cool. Skipping through. I the thought it was hilarious when we see how she first used her powers. She got stung by a bee and then and sent, opened, her parents sent her parents into a portal. Yeah, I, I audibly laughed in the cinema. Yeah. When that is that happened. is that the the first gay relationship we've seen in the MCU? Uh, maybe. So it's no, the reason why they not shown it in Saudi Arabia yeah, because although they. I've, they would have had to refilm. I think it's probably because it's hard to edit around that, really. they said, I think the Saudi Arabians asked them to cut that. Yeah. And they said no. Because the thing is, they, they only say parents after that. Doctor Strange doesn't say, oh, you're two mums or anything like yeah. that. But because that is like the origin scene visually, it's yeah. kind of difficult to... Yeah. Um, so I think I've got a couple of bits of trivia yeah, here. Yeah, go for it. Um, the first one, 
um, at one point, Professor Charles Xavier, Patrick Stewart, oh, yeah. tells Mordo, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean they're lost forever. Yeah. This is the direct quote from X-Men Days of Future Past, wherein <laughs> the old Professor X tells the same thing to his younger self. Right, yes, I, I did like see that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it sounded familiar, but I couldn't tell where it was from, and I thought, oh, it's probably an X-Men thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's quite yeah. a fun little callback. It's like his version of with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And it was nice to see him like finish it off with a bit of yeah. A I'm always happy. To see and the Patrick fact that Stewart. Professor X was the one out of them that believed in Doctor believed Strange. Believed in him and have yeah, faith him, yeah. which was which was good. And my other bit of trivia again about the Patrick Stewart, okay, <laughs> um, which interested me more than you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Patrick Stewart and Anson Mount, members of the Illuminati, yes. as Charles Xavier and Black Bolt, yeah, both play Star Trek captains of the Enterprise. Oh, of course. A day before the official release of the film, mm. two Star Trek episodes w- were released. One starring Patrick Stewart as Jean Luc Picard in the Picard series. Okay. And one with Anson Mount as Christopher Pike <laughs> in Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. <laughs> so both of them. Like in this week, uh, played, actually played still a, concurrently playing yeah, yeah. Uh, current <laughs> Enterprise captains and in Doctor Strange. Wow. I, I'm a bit on set. They must have had a conversation about Star I'm sure Trek. They did. <laughs> actually, I saw that on the red carpet, uh, Patrick Stewart and I don't know if Anson Mount was there. He probably was. But they were all the, the those lot were on the red carpet. So that it's like if silly. you see it, I guess they wanted to be invited because they're in the film. But it's yeah. like, oh. So yeah, I'm glad you didn't see that as well. Um, <laughs> whoever plays uh, Maria Rambo uh, as well, I can't remember yeah, the actress's can't remember name. But, yeah. but um, yeah, that is that's the last thing to do. Is uh, as every time we've said whether we were more or less hyped for the film. Yes. So the question is, did this? I think we were both more hyped for both yeah, of the previous. Yeah, after both of them. Yeah. Um. So, prod yes or podge no? Did this live up to the hype? <laughs> Oh, it's a difficult one, it to be is honest. A difficult it's difficult. One. Um, to be honest, I think I'm going to be a bit controversial and say, Prodge, no. I enjoyed it, but I think my mind kind of got away from me a little bit. And yeah. a lot of these things, I get a bit invested and I think, you know, I maybe it was a little bit. I'm also going to say, Prodge, no. Yeah, I okay. said, Prodge, yes, for both the Batman and Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Prodge, no, for this, because as though. As much as I liked it, it didn't live up to the hype no, for me. No, it really and my didn't. hype was expecting a bit more than what I saw. I think calling something multiverse of madness, and as I said, not having that much multiverse or madness in it yeah. is kind of a bit cheeky. Maybe have even go into the dark hole making you mad a bit more, you know, that sort of thing. It just yeah. there was there was some great stuff in this, and to go back to Elizabeth Olsen, you know, she was probably a standout in this for me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just generally speaking, a little bit let down. Overall, I think I yeah, say. like saying Podge no isn't necessarily saying the film was bad. It wasn't. It's just saying it didn't live up to the hype. Yes. The hype was higher than the what hype I saw. was real. Um, but that is the end of our Doctor Strange series. Yeah. Um, next time round, I can announce <laughs> um, a shorter one. Next year, the screen project will be in build up to Top Gun Maverick. Ooh. So a short one, we'll talk about Top Gun very shortly. Which neither of us have ever seen before. Neither of us have seen it, will be fun. And then Fresh we'll takes. go see Top Gun gun maverick i've got so many films to watch in the cinema (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but until then it's been a pleasure having you along for this strange journey (laughs) uh i thoroughly enjoyed it i believe sam enjoyed it too so hopefully you have as well and we will see you in the The multiverse multiverse. (laughs) (laughs) thanks for listening Bye. bye